no. Okay, okay. Can you guys hear me? Do you guys see my gray hair? Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aida. I'm a comedian, allegedly. I'm also a TV writer and a podcast host and entertainer and a bunch of other things I am definitely not equipped to be doing. Every day feels like a new level of hell. I really can't do what I love, which is writing comedy because I don't feel like anything is funny anymore. Unless you guys want to hear jokes about my cat for like the millionth time. Say hi. I miss laughing, I miss feeling joy, I miss hearing a good joke, peeing my pants a little bit, pretending like I didn't. I really hit my breaking point a little while ago. I'm so used to going to comedy shows every night and seeing people who look like me doing what they love. So I decided to try a little something. Back in the day, in between like 1958 and 1998, there was this TV show called Make Me Laugh. The premise was really, really basic. Guests had to try and keep a straight face while comedians, you guessed it, mostly white men, tried to make me laugh. Surprisingly enough, it's actually pretty fun to watch. And I figured if these dudes could make strangers laugh, definitely my comedian friends could maybe get me to laugh too. How can we find humor at a time when it feels impossible to? Let's find out. We've got my ridiculously muscular for a comedian friend, Jay Jordan. We've got local anime freak and funny man, Yudoye <laughs> Travis. And we have the very funny and very lovely mutual black nerd, Shalewa Sharp. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's get into it. Uh, I've been proclaiming my bisexuality a lot more. I do consider myself bisexual because it's 2020 and women also make money. <laughs> I would like you to consider this for just a second. Charmin built an entire universe based on a rhetorical question. Does a bear shit in the woods? Oh, wait, actually, let me hit, let me get my joke notebook real quick. Um, <laughs> Honestly, the boxes alone are not doing it for me. You think I didn't plan this shit? <laughs> Your boy's a comedic genius. Unfortunately, yeah. You're a prop comic. I have found out why old black people like Joe Biden. Old black people like Joe Biden because, because he's like Westerns. He's the only thing on TV and they've lost the remote. <laughs> old Blazing Saddles looking ass present. <laughs> How are your vision boards looking? Have you had to make a, a few adjustments, perhaps? Change out some of your goals? Uh, I just updated mine. I tend to use aspirational post-its. Uh, so right now I just have a post-it in the middle that says, breathe, you know, <laughs> something like that. Just swing your arms while you're pacing. Uh, you know, my cousin just got out of jail. He was a cop and he used to tell me, if you, uh, if you drink and drive, you can eat a little bit of popcorn and they won't stop you for a, a DUI. It'll mask the scent of alcohol in your breath. And I feel like I gotta remind you he just went to jail because uh, <laughs> cause that's not good advice. My niece, whenever I visit my niece in Mississippi, she likes Chick-fil-A. Now before you judge her, Aida, she's only four years old. She doesn't know any better. She is a bigot. I'm sorry, that one was too good! Do this, I'm not gonna, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. Playing that game was the most I have laughed in a minute. And it made me think why I started comedy in the first place. I did my very first jokes on a stage when I was about 19 years old. And I came up right here in our little comedy scene of Lincoln, Nebraska in my hometown at this very grimy but charming dive bar by the name of Duffy's Tavern. I was a bartender and we had an open mic comedy night. The first time that I landed some raunchy jokes that I won't repeat here, but that night, I couldn't sleep. The whole time, I, I couldn't sleep. I, yeah, I was young, 
I was broke, I was depressed, but I found out I had this ability to make people laugh, something I didn't know I could do. And these days I feel like that power is dwindling away. Before I asked my friends to tell me some jokes, we got into what this time really, really feels like for us and why it's so hard. A lot of us haven't performed on a stage or done a club or bar set in over six months. Things have really, really changed. When you're making others laugh, you have to make yourself laugh first. So you have to like acknowledge whatever your pain is and then find the entry point to deflating that pain that's inside. It is our legacy from the diaspora on, from 1619 up until now, to excavate and dig and find humor in situations like this. You give us the worst thing in the world. It's been our legacy that we beautify it. You say, oh, you gotta eat the worst, toughest parts of the pig. And we go, okay, we'll just cook it for 16 hours. We got time. You already have that part of you that just says like, this shit ain't that bad because we've been saying this shit ain't that bad forever, you know? And that's just like for your mental health. I, shit is that bad. <laughs> it is objectively been that bad, but like, you gotta tell yourself it's not that bad and tell yourself you can laugh at it, you know?